Howdy folks. In a connected graph, any two longest paths must have at least one vertex in common. Kind of cool, and that's what we'll be proving in today's Wrath of Math lesson. When you first think about it, for just a moment, you might think, really, is that true? You know, you can't, you can't just take two longest paths in a graph and, you know, find a couple with maximum length that don't have a vertex in common. I uh, know you can't. And if you think about it for just a little bit longer, you start to understand why. Let's uh, just draw out, um, you know, an arbitrary couple paths that will play the role of our two longest paths in our connected graph. Remember, the graph has to be connected. That's a really important part um, of this theorem. We'll call this first longest path P. We'll say it starts here. And then just draw it, you know, we don't know how long it is, we don't know anything about it, except for the fact that it is a longest path in a connected graph. And then the other one we'll call Q. Alright, so here are our two longest paths, P and Q. Remember, there can be multiple longest paths in a graph. There doesn't, there, there doesn't have to be just one path with maximum length. You can find multiple paths that have a length greater than or equal to the length of any other path in the graph. So that's what we've got here, two longest paths, P and Q. Uh, let's say the length of both of them is K. So K is the greatest length of any path in our connected graph. Now, once you start to think about this uh, just a little bit more, you see why it's true. Because if, if our two longest paths, P and Q, didn't have any vertex in common, then since the graph is connected, there has to be a path connecting some vertex in P to some vertex in Q. So, you know, that path might look something like this. It could be a lot more wild than this dotted line looks, um, but there's some path connecting a vertex in P to a vertex in Q, and then you'd be able to find a longer path by doing something like this, you know, traveling across P and then going across here and then say go back up Q. And that would be a longer path, which would be a contradiction. So that's going to be the sort of argument we're going to use here. We're going to do a, a fun proof by contradiction. And uh, I tell you, I'm just loving the new wireless microphone setup. I'm a free man. Hope you guys like the sort of, uh, you know, holiday decor we got going on here. I think it makes for a nice cozy set. Um, I find this proof just a little bit annoying because uh, it's one of those proofs that, like, it's a pretty simple result. Um, but you got to do a little bit of... Um, it's just, it's a little bit tricky to pin everything down in the proof to make sure everything is how you want it. Uh, so let's just stop complaining about it and uh, do it. <laughs> so let's see, where are we starting? We're supposing P and Q are two longest paths in a connected graph, and we're supposing for the sake of contradiction that they don't have any vertices in common. Uh, now we'll talk about the order, the order of these two paths is going to be important a couple times. Uh, so what I mean by that, we'll just say that the path P goes from this vertex to this vertex, right? It's going down. Same thing with Q. This is the first vertex of Q. This is the last vertex of Q. All right, so now, um, just like when we were talking about this, this path that exists connecting a vertex in P to a vertex in Q, that's where we're going to start. So we're going to say there exists a PQ path X where P is just some vertex on the path P. So the vertex little p is just some vertex on our path P. And the vertex Q is just some vertex on the path Q. So since this is a connected graph, we know there has to exist some path that we're calling X. There has to exist some path X. I dropped my cap from a vertex on P, say little p, to a vertex on Q, we'll call it little q. Um, if this wasn't the case, you know, if there was no way to get from some vertex on this path to some vertex on this path, that would mean the graph is disconnected. Since the graph is connected, we know that a path like this exists. Now you might think, okay, that's this path here, so we just gotta like attach a piece of P to that path and then attach that to a piece of Q and we'll have a contradiction, right? Um, and it's not quite that simple because we don't know that this path X looks like this. So let me just draw, let, let me, to illustrate the potential for complication here, let's do a little bit of a sketch over here. 
let's say that this is our path P, just this line, um, and this is our path Q. This path X that we picked out that goes from P to Q, it might not be a super nice path that just starts at P and then immediately leaves P and then goes to Q and stops. It might not be like that. So for example, it could start at P and then it could come back to P and then it could go to Q and then it could stay on Q for a little bit. And so, so uh, the starting vertex might not be the last vertex on P and the ending vertex might not be the first vertex on Q. And so that's going to make things just a little bit trickier. And the reason this is important is that, you know, say we want to attach this piece of P to this path and then attach that to a piece of Q in order to make a longer path. That's going to be a problem if X is a path like this, because when we do that, we wouldn't actually get a path. You know, if we, if we include this piece of P, then we're, we're passing through this vertex. And then if we include this pink path that we're saying, you know, this is what X might look like, then we'd be hitting that vertex again. Uh, and, and so among other problems that pop up over here, but so clearly uh, we, we have to make a few more arguments to make sure that we have a path that's like this. It starts at P and then it immediately leaves P and doesn't come back. <laughs> and then it stops as soon as it gets to Q. Um, and then that way we'll be able to make our contradiction nice and easy um, with no, no potential for oversight. Okay, so, uh, and it, it's pretty simple argument. It just takes a, a little bit of, you know, wordiness. So first we want to identify the last vertex of the path that is on P. We're identifying the moment that it leaves the path P. And we know some vertex like that exists. So we'll say there exists a last vertex or there exists some, there exists some last vertex of the path X. There exists some last vertex of X that is on the path P. And we'll say that this vertex is P prime. We'll call it P prime. So there exists some last vertex P prime of our path X that's on the path P. We know that a, a vertex like this exists because the path does leave P, right? It stops at Q, which is a vertex of Q. And since Q and P have no vertices in common, we know that at some point, this path X has to leave P. So let P prime be the last vertex of the path X that is on P. All right, and just in our diagram, we're gonna, we're gonna call that that vertex there. We'll call that P prime. And then we're making a very similar argument uh, about Q. We want to identify a last vertex, or excuse me, a first vertex of the path X that's on Q, the moment that the path X gets to Q. And that's where we want it to stop. So we'll say there exists some first vertex of X, some first vertex, some first vertex that we'll call Q prime. There exists some first vertex Q prime of X on the path Q. That's the vertex, you know, the first vertex where it arrives at Q and we'll call that Q prime. So let me label that, this vertex there. That's, that's kind of an ugly Q, that's Q prime. Okay, so now we can nail down the nice path that we want, the path we're gonna be able to use to make a contradiction. Um, and this path goes from P prime to Q prime. And because of how we've identified P prime and Q prime, we know that this path, this path that we're gonna call X prime, it has no vertices in common with P or Q except for P prime and Q prime. So we'll be able to stitch it together with pieces of these paths and we'll end up with an actual path that we can use to make a contradiction. So now we can point out, we can point out that there exists a path from P prime to Q prime. There exists a P prime Q prime path that we'll call X prime. There exists a P prime Q prime path called X prime with, or we'll say containing, 
containing no vertices of the paths P or Q, contains no vertices of P or Q, except for its first and last vertex, except for P prime and Q prime, except for P prime and Q prime. We know this path exists because it's just a part, it's just a piece of that path X we began with, right? So if we were to just draw that path X, you know, it might look, look something like that, and we say, okay, uh, we want our path X prime to start here, the last vertex of P that's on the path X, and then we want our path X prime to end here, the first vertex, the first vertex of X that's on Q. And so then we've got our path X prime. That's, that's hideous. I'll just erase that. <laughs> uh, we got our path X prime that it has no vertices in common with P or Q except for its first and last vertex. And so we're gonna be able to use it to make a path. Now, we just gotta split P and Q into two pieces in order to finalize, uh, you know, finally put this contradiction together. So, uh, there's a pretty natural way to split these paths. Let's say, let's say that this first part of P, going from the first vertex to P prime, let's say this is P1, we'll call it P1. And then the rest of P, going from P prime to the last vertex, we'll call P2. Same thing with Q. Going from the first vertex to Q prime, we'll call that part of Q, Q1. Going from Q prime to the last vertex, we're gonna call that Q2. So now, now you see hopefully what we were getting at in the beginning of the video. We can do something like travel along P1, then along X prime, and then along Q2, and we might end up uh, with a path longer than K, which would be a contradiction. Um, but we only might end up with such a long path. We gotta make one more argument here. Um, so P1, either P1 or P2, at least one of them has to have a length greater than or equal to K over two. Let me write this out. So the length of P, the length of P1, excuse me, the length of this first part of P from the first vertex to P prime, or the length of P2 is greater than or equal to K over two. We know that has to be true because if both of them are less than K over two in length, then they can't possibly come together to form a path of length k. So at least one of them has to have a length greater than or equal to k over two. Same thing is true about, uh, same thing is true about q1 and q2. At least one of them has to have a length greater than or equal to, to k over two. Um, and then uh, for the sake of this explanation, let's just assume it's p1 and q1 that have a length greater than or equal to k over two. If you are really, uh, you know, writing out a thorough proof, you might do this by cases. That's one way you could just make sure you cover all your bases. Um, but I think the explanation is pretty clear. Let's just assume it's P1 and Q1 that have a length greater than or equal to K over two. It doesn't really matter, um, you know, which of each pair has that length. Um, the proof proceeds pretty much the same way. Uh, so then we just got to put together our path that's going to lead to a contradiction. Let's use orange. Oh, knocked my lights off. So, so then our path, uh, our final path of interest is taking P1. Um, so again, we're assuming P1 and Q2 have a length greater than or equal to K over two. Um, so then we can, we can make this final, this final really long path that travels across P1, then across X prime. And notice here, uh, you know, the importance of X prime coming in here. P1 ends at P prime. X prime begins at P prime, and we know that X prime doesn't go back to the path P. So we know that we've got a valid path we're working with here. Then X prime stops at Q prime, by definition, by how we define this path. And we also know that's the first vertex of Q that's on the path, which means um, all of the other vertices of Q we're free to go travel along them if we please, because we haven't been to any others except for Q prime. So then what we'll do is we'll travel up, we'll travel up Q1. So we can, we can call that Q1 inverse, because remember, we said that both of these paths are going downwards. So going, going up Q1, we could call that Q1 
in verse. So then this is, this is our path that's going to prove the result. We travel across P1, and then we travel across X prime, and then we travel up Q1. Now what is the length of this path, or what do we know about the length of this path? Well, the length of P1 and the length of Q1 inverse, uh, both of those lengths are greater than or equal to K over 2. So if you add them up, um, you know, in this path, just the lengths of those two pieces um, total to at least k, at least k. And then add in the length of x prime, add in the length of x, x prime, and the total length is at least k plus 1. Because the length of x prime is at least 1. We know that's true, because p and q have no vertices in common. Remember, that was our contradiction assumption. Thus, it's going to take at least one edge to get from the path p to the path q. x prime has to have a length of at least one, and so the total length of this path, total length of that path, is at least k plus one. Hence, we have identified a path in the graph uh, with a length greater than the length of the two longest paths. That's a contradiction. That can't be. And so, our original assumption that P and Q have no vertices in common, uh, that, was, that was false. In fact, they do have at least one vertex in common, and that's how you prove it. So, uh, a pretty neat little proof, you know, it's a fairly simple result that takes a, a decent bit of work. Um, in any event, I hope this video helped you understand the proof. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And if you didn't check out the recent Fire Hip Hop track, be sure to give that a listen.